I believe Russia has cheated the European governments for billions of euros, so we should, we should sue Russia and boycott their products until they have provided these hidden data that should show some dramatic effects of their drug. It's very strange if they show these effects that we cannot see them. As far as I know, Tamiflu is not better than aspirin or paracetamol, which are far cheaper. So this is a good illustration why we need access to all the data. And uh, I can uh, continue where Ben stopped by talking about um, Avandia, this diabetes drug, where Glaxo hit um, data that showed that it causes cardiovascular events and myocardial infarction. So actually the drug killed thousands of patients and the doctors were in good faith. They thought it was a good drug. And again, the drug industry has hidden the data. Merck hit data on myocardial infarctions on Vioxx, even from the UN Journal of Medicine. So it just goes on and goes on and goes on. And there is a huge conflict of interest in the drug industry between an honest data analysis and a not so honest data analysis. The difference can be worth billions of euros on the uh, world market. So you cannot trust what the drug industry does. They have a too big conflict of interest and therefore we need access to all the data, not only the, the clinical study reports but actually the raw data so that we can calculate ourselves what the data show. And according to the Ombudsman, you can say that in a minute these data belong to society, not to the drug companies who think it's their data, it's not, it's our data, it's our patient's data. And I'm very pleased that the EMA now goes in the same direction as we want, namely to ensure access also to the raw data in statistical programs so that we can work on them. So when that is going to be the case with the EMA, we also need to ensure it's going to be the case in the new clinical trials directive, which currently only speaks about submitting summaries of the data but we cannot trust summaries of the data made up by the drug companies. We need the full reports, the full raw data. That's virtually important and we need them within a year and not with any possibility of postponing or delaying these data because it's not necessary. The WHO, the OECD, all other good organizations say for publicly funded research that we must see the results within a year. It must be the same for drugs. Of course it must be the same. I have a few other comments to the clinical trial directive that before a trial is approved, it's not enough just to ask for a summary of previous trials. Because often people write in protocols, oh, some trials say this and some say the opposite, so therefore we need a new trial. But if people had done a systematic review of all existing trials, they will often find out that the new trial is superfluous and therefore unethical. It's not needed. We need a systematic review as a requirement for approving a new trial. Then we also need the investigators to submit adverse events after the patients have stopped their drug. In the current directive, it is said that only if the investigator becomes aware of adverse events after uh, the, the patient came off the drug, they shall report it. No. They shall report it within, for example, four weeks after the patient came off the drug because many serious adverse events, including in psychiatry, occur during weeks after they have come off the drug, for example, dependent symptoms of happy pills and so on. So we need more time to look at the adverse events. Also, there is something about a clinical master file that it can be destroyed after five years no, no, no. It must exist indefinitely. And this is not a problem because all the data can be in a PDF. So there, and if you destroy all the data after five years, we cannot sue the companies. It must be there indefinitely. Um, and, um, and also uh, the current trial directive uh, leaves to the companies to make judgments. You should never do this because they will be abused. Uh, so the companies should judge whether they make a substantial change to the protocol. And then if the company thinks it's substantial, it should perhaps have a new approval. But we know from our research that drug companies change the outcomes in trials two thirds of the time. They change the primary outcome. So when the first statistical analysis doesn't work, they total your data until they confess 
and then they find something that is significant and they publish this and then they cheat us because they tell us this was our primary outcome but when we have access to the protocols we can see it was not your primary outcome so don't leave anything to the companies if they change anything in the protocol they must notify the eu trial portal 